On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, a PSA about the PVSA. That's right, a public service announcement about the Passenger Vessel Service Act. I am host Sal Mercagliano. I am the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner and an adjunct instructor in maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Okay, why are we talking about the Passenger Vessel Service Act today? I mean, come on, Sal, there's container ships piled up somewhere. Well, there's other aspects of the shipping industry beyond just uh, container liners. So I thought I'd talk about this because there's a new bill being introduced into the Senate by Lisa Murkowski, Republican from Alaska, and it has the potential to change American law. So let's go ahead and kind of dive right into it right now. So this bill that was introduced, here's the story right now on it from G Captain. Uh, G Captain had this story on it. And basically what they're talking about here is a permanent exemption of Alaska from the Passenger Vessel Service Act. So Senator Murkowski in introduced this bill to exempt large Alaska cruises from the Passenger Vessel Service Act. And the article here goes in here. This is from Mike Schuller over at G Captain who wrote it. And basically what it is, it's called the Cruising for Alaska's Workforce Act. It is not a huge act because I pulled it up right here. It is not tremendous at all. A permanent under cer certain conditions, the transportation of passengers between the state of Alaska and other U.S. states ports on vessels not qualified to engage in the coastwise trade that transport more than 1,000 passengers and for other purposes. Uh, it goes on here, and it's not a very long bill. I have to tell you, it, it's kind of actually one of the most amazing bills I've seen because it's short and to the point. Uh, lays out here what a passenger vessel is. They're talking about a ship over 1,000 passengers on board. They're talking about the period it's going on for. It talks about where coastwise qualified vessels offering service are. And then it talks in here a little bit more about the details of it. But basically what this is going to do is permit the large ocean going cruise liners to be able to sail from the United States, from the West Coast, from Seattle, from San Francisco, from LA to Long Beach, directly to Alaska without stopping in Canada, which had been the rule prior to this. Now, there's a temporary waiver on that that I'll talk about right now that's in place. But this bill by itself basically talks about this. Now, this also goes on here to talk about uh, other issues here. Uh, PSVA had been a hot topic during the COVID-19 pandemic with Canada banning passenger vessels from its waters through February 2022. And there's a story right here from Bloomberg that talks about that specific issue, that it was Canada that shut this off and put it there. Uh, and then there's this opinion piece in here, my opinion piece, matter of fact, the Love Boat American Style, which is kind of what I'm going to talk about today. But if you're interested more in what I'm talking about here today, want to read a little more, that's the article I will point you to. And then there's this story right here. This is Alaska Cruises set to resume as Congress passes bill to waive the Passenger Vessel Service Act. This is the temporary bill that was put in to effect. The legislation comes in response to Canada's ban on passenger vessels. And then they put in place this temporary ban or temporary repeal right now, which puts it into, into place here. So here we have the story right here going on. This goes back to the original story that was listed here about this happening. And so basically what the argument here, and it goes on here to kind of talk about it here, is uh, Alaska Governor Mike uh, Dunleavy earlier this year attributed a $3 billion economic impact for each season cruising to the state is suspended. I'm proud to introduce new legislation to provide a permanent exemption for cruises between any U.S. port and Alaska from the PVSA. And they have been given support from a large measure of people, not the least of which is the Cato Institute, which uh, came out in full force behind this repeal. And I should tell you, I have a long, 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 long history with the Cato Institute. We do not see eye to eye on many things. Uh, I am pretty sure my face is somewhere on a dartboard in the Cato Institute. I, I'm, I'm getting a long list of people that don't like me. Uh, NTSB, Military Seal of Command, and now uh, the Cato Institute. Uh, but here they are lobbying, arguing for a basic repeal of it. It's written by Colin uh, Gabriel, uh, uh, who basically wrote this, basically puts in all the detail about it. And again, I could not put Colin uh, Grabo's response here, but I try to provide a balanced views here. I don't try to come at anything from one perspective or one viewpoint. I really want you to kind of figure that out. It's up to you. Uh, I think it's very important that that is done. Uh, and then there's this story right here from Maritime Executive 
uh, which talks about this. New bill would exempt Alaska crews from U.S. cabotage laws. It goes on here, after creating an exemption from the U.S. cabotage regulations in 2021 for large cruising ships, Senator Mikowski is now seeking to extend the exemption. It goes on here, while the PFBSA is, still serves its purpose in the lower 48, it unintentionally puts many Alaskan businessmen at the mercy of the Canadian government when Canada closed its borders, including ports. The inability for cruises to travel to Alaska nearly wiped out economies in southeast communities like Skagway, and examples saw an 80% drop in business revenues, Senator Murkowski. Okay, hang on a second. The PVSA did none of that. Let me be clear about this. It's something called COVID that did that. that this is my issue with this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit fired up on this one because it was the COVID that shut down the cruise industry. It wasn't the PVSA, and it didn't matter if Canada allowed them to come in or not. We're still seeing the cruise industry just now starting to get back up and running. I mean, they are not at full operations yet. Matter of fact, right here, we got this story in here about posting latest quarterly losses. Carnival says bookings for 2022, second half above pre-pandemic level. So they're coming back up, but right now they're not at what they need to be. And for Senator Murkowski to sit there and say, it's because of the PVSA that the reason that Skagway is 80% below is, is disingenuous just to say the least. But what I wanted to do is just take a, a second and, and take a step back here and look at what the Passenger Vessel Service Act is. First of all, it's a law that was passed in 1886. Now, whenever anything's passed that people don't like and it's old, they sit there and say, it's antiquated. Well, there are a lot of antiquated laws in the books that aren't bad. Murder, that's an antiquated law. That's, that's a good law. Constitution, that's antiquated. That's a pretty good law, in my opinion. So just because something is old doesn't mean it's not right. That's, that's, that, 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 that's a cheap argument, in my opinion. What's the act? This is the act right here. I actually pulled you up the actual act right here. And matter of fact, this is it. Section eight, that foreign vessels found transporting passengers between places or ports in the United States when such passengers have been taken on board in the United States shall be liable to a fine of $2 for every passenger landed. This is from a bill, which I'll show you the exact here. Right here, an act to abolish certain fees for official services to American vessels and to amend the laws relating to shipping commissioners, seamen, owners of vessels, and for other purposes, June 19th, 1886. This is what they call the Passenger Vessel Service Act. So first off, let me make it perfectly clear. It is not illegal for a cruise ship to load passengers in the United States and go directly to a United States port and then back to that original port and dump them off. They can do that all day long but they have to pay to do that. There is a fine imposed on it. It's not illegal. You can do it all day long. You just have to pay the fine. In 1886, it was $2. According to the Customs and Border Protection, that fine has changed a bit. This is their latest iteration on it, September 2019. And you'll see right here that the fine, which had been $300 for each passenger transport and landed on or before November 2nd, 19, uh, 2015, after that, it's $798 for each passenger transport and landed after November 2nd, 2015. And that is issued to the vessel operator or carrier, not the passenger. It is not the passenger who gets that. It's the shipping line that gets it. They're the one who gets the fee. This comes, again, from Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, this is their notices that came out here on the Passenger Vessel Service Act. I will have all this, obviously, in the show notes for you to take a look at. So, why, why, why is this an issue? Why, why is this an issue? Number one, let me be 100% clear. I am not against the cruise industry. I have taken cruises before. I've been on Celebrity. I've been on Disney. I've been on Disney many times. I have, I have a child. I've, I've been on Disney way, <laughs> a lot of times. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back out on cruises. I enjoy cruising. I like being on a big boat, believe it or not. I enjoy it a lot. However, there's something we need to clarify here. Senator Murkowski pushing this bill is helping the cruise industry much more than she's helping everybody else. Do I think Alaskan tourism taking a hit? Absolutely. Should they be helped? Should they be helped? Sure. Why not? How much other tourism has been hit in the United States? Grand Canyon, that's probably been hit pretty hard. I'm going to mention a lot of tourist spots around the United States has been hit hard. My problem is this will benefit directly the cruise industry. And again, don't have anything against the cruise industry. What I have a problem with right here is that the cruise industry gets a lot out of this, and we, the United States, get very little out of this, particularly the maritime sector. 
I am a huge proponent for the American Merchant Marine. People say that, Sal, you're, you're pro Jones Act, you're pro Passenger Vessel Service Act. No, I'm pro, pro American Merchant Marine, American Maritime Sector. That's what I am. I'm, I'm unabashedly going to tell you that. That's it. You know, you should know my opinion. That's my opinion right there. So let's look at a couple of things here that is going on that was mentioned by Senator Mikowski. And also, let's look at what's going on specifically with these cruise lines. So this is the Google financial page for Carnival Cruise Lines right here. And this is set at their max level going all the way back to early 1987, when you can buy a share of Carnival for $3.84. And And it had maxed out basically here in June 26, 2018 at $71.65. Can you find on this graph where COVID hit? Right there. Huge drop right there. And now we see it rebounding back up. Uh, Carnival is a massive corporation. Uh, and, and again, Carnival isn't just Carnival Cruise Lines. They own a whole sets of subsidiaries, massive subsidiaries right here. Uh, one of the things you see here is the amount of hit they have taken since COVID hit. You can see a little bit of revenue there in May of 2020, and then almost all they're losing money. And even right here, you get a little bit of revenue in May of 2021, but almost no revenue. But if you go back to the annual, you'll see how much money they were making. And even now, when we go and look at their their funding right now in May 2021, they have $7.07 billion of cash on hand. Now, they're operating in a net. They're obviously losing money right now uh, going down. Their net income is down $2 billion, and they've had to take loans against their vessels. Uh, They've had to basically sell stock. Uh, But again, the cruise lines are slowly coming back. It did not help for example, that a lot of early COVID was on board a cruise ship. So it's obviously hit the cruise companies hard. Here's Norwegian, almost the same thing. You can see where it dropped, just precipitately dropped well below where the cruise lines were, but same kind of performance right there. There's the quarterly, most recently quarterly. Here's their annual, again, banging money for years and years here, just making huge profits over and over, You know, cash on hand, $3.3 billion dollars. They're losing again uh, in, in 2024. They lost four billion dollars in 2020. So again, we're we're seeing the situation. They have now, uh, on, as of June 2021, 2.75 billion in hand. And then same thing with Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean, you can see the same exact thing. How low they were at the very beginning. Really, we're we're banging high here at the late uh, 2010s, just before COVID, and then boom, they hit. Same thing. Very little growth right there. Go to the annual again. They were doing great. Go back to the quarterly here. They're sitting right now with $4.25 billion cash on hand. So these cruise lines are doing, we're doing great and, and, and massive. Again, we were talking about in 2019, 404 ships across the major cruise lines. We've talked about consolidation in the, cru- in the container ship business. Cruise lines worse. I mean, the cruise line, I mean, C- Carnival controls nearly half of the berths at sea, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, if you throw in their MSC, and if you throw in their Genting, you're talking about those top five groups controlling over 85% of the cruise lines. And it brings us back to this issue right here, which is Senator Murkowski wanting to waive the Passenger Vessel Service Act. Again, I have nothing but compassion for the people of Alaska. I have nothing but compassion for everyone who suffered during COVID. I think we all have in many ways, many worse than others. That's definitely clear. There's no doubt about that. But if you want to repeal the PVSA or get a permanent exemption from Alaska from the PVSA, what's in it for us? Seriously, what's in it for us? I I posted a tweet the other day where I went down this. It was yesterday I did it. And I, you know, I asked a couple of things. I put a couple of points up here. So why is this a bad idea? Number one, there is a benefit for the cruise lines, which are all offshore and foreign flagged. So number one, those three companies, Carnival, Norwegian, Carnival, uh, uh, Royal Caribbean. Here's Carnival's headquarters right here in Doral, Florida. They got one of the smokestacks from one of their ships right there. You could drive right to it. It's beautiful right there in Doral, Florida. Here's Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean also right there in Florida, right there on the water. It's beautiful. It's just fantastic. Norwegian, uh, Norwegian's right there down in Miami-Dade. They're within 20 miles of each other, these places. The headquarters for the three biggest cruise lines all within 20 miles of each other. It's fantastic. If you want to go to their corporate headquarters, however, this is their operating headquarters. If you want to go to where they're incorporated, well, from Carnival, you would have to fly to Panama. 
if you want to go to where uh, Royal Caribbean is, you got to go to Liberia. I, I wouldn't recommend that. If you want to go to Nor- Norwegian, is you got to go to the you got to go to Bermuda. Well, that's nice. It's beautiful, but they're all offshore. They're all offshore, and all their vessels, except for one, one Norwegian vessel which operates in the Hawaii trade, are all foreign flat. Which again, nothing. If that's the way they want to operate, they can operate. But your headquarters is in the United States. You employ, yes, U.S. employees. There are U.S. employees working here. But corporate taxes, they don't pay those because they're not incorporated in the United States. They have to pay income tax in Panama, which isn't much. You have to pay income tax in Liberia. I don't even know if it exists. You have to pay taxes in Bermuda. Not sure what that is. It's not a lot. But that's where that is. This is a huge benefit for these three corporations which is great. But again, what's in it for us? What's in it for us? So that was my first point I sat in there. The second issue, does this lead to the eventual repeal of the entire PVSA? Because if you you repeal one section of the PVSA, then if you do this for Alaska, why not Hawaii? Why not Puerto Rico? Why not the West Coast? Why not the East Coast? Why not the Gulf Coast? Why don't we start repealing this? There needs to be concern about it. Now, I'm not against making changes. But there needs to be more than just a five-page bill that opens this up without costing these companies something in return. Because if not, what stops everybody from doing this again? Which I think is a big issue. Because again, when these ships come in and they dock in your ports, remember, they're not paying US labor laws for their crews on board. They're staying, basically, it's a floating hotel, comes into your port, sits there. And people are staying on these things for very little amount of money. I mean, you can get carnival cruises and, and, and package cruises for a very low amount of money, less than you would ever stay at a hotel, plus meals included, food, you get the beverage packages, all those things. And you basically park a, a, a you know, couple of thousand bed hotel in the middle of a bay in San Francisco and LA and New York and Boston and in, in Charleston. And what happens to the industries there? What stops you from changing the Staten Island ferry, which carries over a thousand passengers, to reflagging it to Panama, to Liberia to operate? What stops you from bringing foreign crew members on and, hot, and, and firing the crew members on there? These are the concerns you have to have about this. Uh, third point I made, many will argue this is good, but what happens when these ships start running up and down the coast? Again, big issues. We talked about the foreign crews. Uh, we talked about the impacts. But let me go to the bigger issue. Let me go to the bigger issue here that I think it is. What do we get out of this? What do we get out of this? These ships are flagged in Liberia, in Panama, in in, in Bahamas, Bermuda, you name it. They're they're foreign flags. Uh, There's a lot of attention. I've done videos on on one of the captains on a celebrity cruise liner, uh, Kate McHugh, who is a graduate of the California State Maritime Academy. She's got, you know, she's fantastic female captain. She's done great to promote uh, women in the industry. But I have to tell you, Americans working on cruise ships don't get paid a lot of money. They get paid the salaries that the European captains get, the Eastern European captains get. It's a lot lower than what a lot of people think they should be paid. And more importantly, if you're going to operate in the Alaska trade, why is it that the deck officers and the engine officers and the deck crew and the engine crew, I'm not talking about the hotel staff. I'm not talking about the waiters. I'm not talking about everything else. But if you want to operate between U.S. ports, then why are we not having American mariners on board? Why is it not a priority that, hey, Holland America, if, if, if Carnival, if, if, if Norwegian, if Celebrity want to operate it from the West Coast to Alaska in this wavered area now that's going to exist, that. of your deck crew and engine crew have to be American licensed crew and paid American wages comparable through what the unions or the base pay that's on average set. Uh, And if you tell me you can't afford that, I'm going to come back to this and sit here and say, "Mm, yes, you can, because you've been operating in the red for over a year. And you've been, you haven't got, if you're telling me that the, the cost to pay a several Americans is going to put you under, I have a problem with that because you're not being accurate about that. There's no way. There's no way that's going to happen. You can have your headquarters here in the United States. You can basically have CEOs who are Americans. You can, you know, you can pay corporate dividends to these guys who run this thing. You can have the bailout packages for these guys, but for some strange reason, you can't hire American mariners on board. That's a problem. Uh, How about getting the ships repaired in U.S.? facilities. You want to operate between U.S. ports? Great. You're going to use U.S. repair facilities. You're going to use U.S. shipyards. That 
generates revenue for our US shipyards. It builds our maritime industry base. That's fantastic. You want to operate under that waiver? Fantastic. Then you're going to go in here and work in our shipyards and get it going. And people are going to sit there and say, well, US shipyards are expensive. It's because foreign flag ships don't go into US shipyards because they go overseas to shipyards where they don't have to pay a lot of money to go get it done. So that's one of the issues I would add right there. Uh, we just saw two cruise liners go into New Orleans for Hurricane Ida to do relief. We saw the same thing during Katrina, for example. Uh, cruise lines, you want to get into this, this, this trade, then you're committing your vessel to potential callback by the U.S. government for use in times of a national emergency. You have to commit a vessel or whatever, how many vessels you put on this trade to that callback. And you have to agree to it, even if it involves getting your crew off and we take the vessel and we'll man it and we'll take it over. Uh, there has to be an agreement to that. Again, Senator Mikowski wants to make this change. That's great. What's in it for us? What, what, why are we giving away something and getting nothing in return? I'm not going to sit there and fight and say, you know, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. That's fine. But what, what do we get in return? Again, go back to the original to the bill she put in here. Five pages. I can change this right now and send it back to her and amend it and have provisions in there so the United States gets something out of this. And again, I'm going to hear it from these guys right here that I'm making it more expensive and, and, and doing all this stuff. And, and it's, it, it's, 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 you know, again, they, they, they want to argue in favor of this. But again, who are they arguing in favor of? They're arguing in favor of companies that are in the United States, but incorporated overseas and making profits, massive profits. Again, I come back to this. They're making their money. It's not like these cruise lines are going to go out of business anytime soon. Even with COVID, they're going to be up and running in no time sooner. And just like the container companies we have talked about, they have built larger and larger vessels, economy of scales. They're throwing anywhere from 1,000 to five to 6,000 passengers on these vessels. And I'm talking about a deck and engine crew that numbers less than 100 personnel on board, less than that. It's probably about 50, in, well, more than that for the engine side, because these ships have huge engine compartments beyond just the main drive engines. They have to provide husbandry and ho hotel services. So that, that's a lot different. So maybe you're talking about 100 personnel on board that we, that we change over to American crew members. If you want your hotel staff, your, your, your cleaners, your, your, your room, room service people and everything like that, whatever. I'm talking about the people who man and operate the vessels. And right now, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian, do they hire American officers? Sure, they do. But I'm telling you, I know people who've done this job. It's not good wages. It's not enough good wages to basically do this. It's a great job. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to be on a regular routine business run, go back and forth and everything like that. Captain Kate Q, who's the captain on one of the celebrity ships, talks about it all the time. She and one other captain rotate off. You know, they share that cabin. They have their own, you know, you know they have their own lockers in there or, or, or cabinets in there. So they keep their all the gear on board. It's got to fly in, take over the vessel from each other. It's a great arrangement. It's fantastic. Why are Americans not taking advantage of that? You know, half the cruise industry benefits off the United States and we let them benefit off of us. But we don't sit there and come back in and, and make an agreement whereby we, the United States, the U.S. Merchant Marine, the U.S. Maritime Sector, can benefit from it. Instead, what Senator Murkowski is putting out there will be great for the Alaskan tourism trade. It's, it's good. It, it, it'll get a lot cruise ships up there. But again, the issue that's keeping cruise ships out of Alaska right now, number one, is COVID. Number two, it's going to get winter soon. And they've already missed most of the cruise season up there because you typically do it in the summertime. So. I would have her rethink that bill, change it, and include provisions that benefit the United States. And then let's see how much the cruise industry wants that to go through. And I'd be interested to see their reaction to it. And again, I talked all about that in that article I have in here, uh, uh, Love Boat American Style. Sorry, I grew up on the Love Boat. I love the Love Boat. Love Gopher. Love Doc. Just, 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 it's great. Great, Isaac. Right back at you. Just, just love that stuff. So again, I thought this is an interesting topic to talk about. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Also, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it across social media. Be sure to send it to friends you have at Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian. I have a figure, I have a feeling I may not be welcome on the ships when I go on board soon, but who knows? You never know. Maybe they'll like it. Who knows? But anyway, this is Sal signing off.